same original eight members, you know, that started. Same crew. We've even got the same road crew. We're basically the same gang that came on the road 25 years ago. And we're extremely proud about that and extremely amazed. still promoting reggae music. We started off, you know, our mission, you know, as youngsters was to promote the music that we love, which is reggae and dub. And uh, 50 million albums later, you know, and 25 years later, and we still won't get played on the radio, you know. <laughs> <laughs> When we started, people used to say to us, you know, can you imagine being the Stones or, or <laughs> We all said, McCartney. Well, doing it in your 40s, are are you going, mad? Oh, don't be ridiculous, you know, don't they look silly, <laughs> them old blokes up there. And here we are, old blokes doing it. <laughs> yeah, but, but they're still up there in their 60s, and so that's what makes exactly. it okay for us to keep yeah. doing it. And they are still doing it. And But now I understand what it is that they love. If it happens again, I'm leaving. I'm back on my things, thank God. If it happens again, we're still seen as a novelty band and we're still asked have you been to the Caribbean for your holidays you know is that <laughs> is that why you're making this music you know and this this you know black lady uh, recently said to me don't take this rug but you sound so much like boy George you know and I'm going <laughs> You know, I think we're still greatly misunderstood. <laughs> Who are you fighting for? With this new album, with Who You're Fighting For, we've been going in and recording as a band, like we used to. The last two albums that we did, Cover Up and Homegrown, even though they were good, they didn't sound to us like UB40, and we decided in the end that we had to go back in and jam. Who You're Fighting For is a sort of small attempt at counteracting the massive propaganda machine that goes into gear every time we go off to war. Queen and country freedom cry. That's just a song kind of saying, hold on a minute, think about it, you know, do you really know what you're fighting for? Who are you fighting for? Plenty more. It's an anti-Bush song. It's an anti-American song. It's, it's about the war again. They tell a tall story of all those again. All that they had for the freedom they'd say. On the TV broadcast, they said it won't last. All over by Sunday, in signs in the past. The cleanup starts Monday, despite the bomb blast. Brand new beginning, the die has been cast. And if you think about it, you know, songs about the war have been pretty conspicuous by their absence in, you know, in the charts. In, uh, I mean, who's singing about it? You know, who's talking about it? We are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go and cry into somebody else's beer, you're about 14, you know. Reasons why I love you, why you like my dick, you are my son. We've had great trouble with reasons. <laughs> Um, because we had it as a song and we weren't at all happy with it, you know, we didn't know what to do with it. I know that you will be true to me. Then we got involved with uh, the, the, uh, the Dial Drummers and my man. And Hunters. And Hunters, yeah. he's a beautiful singer. We just loved what he did and then we got the drum guys in, you know, and uh, lo and behold, everyone sang what a wonderful tune it is. And, and it sounds like a single. The first single, Kiss and Say Goodbye. Manhattan's tune. We 
compiled the list of tunes that we wanted to do for the last 20 odd years. And then we tried Kiss and Say Goodbye this year and we just loved what, the way it was working. You know? It was just like being in a band again. It was like remembering, ah, this is what we're supposed to do. You know? And we were playing as a band and the difference it, you can hear in the album, it sounds like a band, again, you know, that are happy to be doing what they do. Our track record is, is second to very few acts, you know, over the last 25 years. If Kiss and Say Goodbye goes top 40, I think it's either 48 or 49 top 40 singles, you know, so we're very close to 50 top 40 singles. <laughs> Food for Thought, that was our, our very first single, and it went to number four. Most people, if you talk to them now, wouldn't be able to tell you what that song was about. They'd just remember the tune, and the fact that they liked the song, and that it fitted the sound of the time, you know. And it was all about the hypocrisy of Christmas, you know, and how we could be celebrating Christmas and all stuffing into our turkeys and Roasters and Yorkshire. It was the real that, original while, Live Aid you know, song. Well, that's what it was. People are dying every, was it three seconds of starvation? As luck would have it, we sold eight million of that first album. I can't listen to it now. It's painful for me to listen to Signing Up <laughs> because it's all out of tune, you know. But we didn't know how to tune, we were all self taught, you know. I have a one inch head. Yeah, I have a one inch head. You see, people loved that anthem, didn't they? didn't know what we were saying at all. That was at a time when one in 10 unemployment and uh, you know, we were just freshly off the dole. We were the one in 10s or we had been. So we wrote songs about it. It's basically a list of statistics. Well, as far as reggae goes, it goes, you know, it, it peaks every 10 years, you know, reggae comes back obviously with each new generation. And now in Austria, for instance, there's a big reggae movement for real. You know, yeah, it wouldn't have happened 20 years ago, would it? We're still on the same mission to promote dub. <laughs> Even though now dub is the most influential music in the contemporary world. The fact that we're still doing after 25 years, it just gives us, you know, even more enthusiasm to go out and push what we do. We had the uh, the biggest selling, um, the first big selling dub album ever, and it was presented. The first Arms ever dub, dub album to be in the charts. People were bringing it, bringing it back to the shops in droves, going, "There's no singing on it. You know, <laughs> there's something wrong with it. You know." So we've we've yeah, gone my, from that. My new UB40 album's faulty. Yeah. The record company can get one of our songs on the radio. Great, you know. One day we're, you know, we're flavour of the month, and the next day nobody wants to play. Where we come from in Birmingham, it was number one for weeks, you know, in the reggae charts. I adored that tune. That to me was just like one of the great tunes of my youth, you know. So when we came to do Labour of Love, every one of us just went, we've got to do that one. Red Red Wine, it just sold so many copies that it couldn't be argued with, you know. Finally, we felt like, finally, we've got our position, you know, we've finally got recognition. And of course then, five years later, it went to number one in America. Please don't make me cry. It's another lover's rock classic. It was an absolute classic. Where we came from. British. It was a British reggae hit. As far as, uh, like Ali said, where we came from, it was number one in the charts. Please, please don't make me cry. It was the sexy record that got played at the end of the night. Reggae keeps coming round, and it, you know, it will always be the music of choice of young kids because it's the sexiest music in the world, you know, and it's about integration and all that. 
We do have a great time live, you know. We are a live band, and that's how we see ourselves as a is as a performing band, you know. And uh, that's where our strength is, uh, more so than in our records, is in what we do live. having a great time, entertaining the crowd, and the crowd having a great time, it's about a party atmosphere rather than, it's not a political atmosphere, it's not anything other than we're here to enjoy right. ourselves. Kick up rumpus. You know, it's, it's the same as going to a party, a dance hall, you know. For us, that's what our music is about, it's about getting up and having a good time. <laughs> Kingston Town is like Red Red Wine and, you know, all of those Labour Love tunes, those are the tunes that we grew up on. Those are the tunes that made us love reggae, that made us want to be in a reggae band. One of those automatics, you know, that was always going to be on a Labour of Love album. It just had to be. Commercial suicide, we were told. Labour of Love, commercial suicide. You'll <laughs> die, you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be dead in the People call you water. a cabaret band. You're the political, you know, the doll coup band and all that. You, you cannot do covers. And, of course, it was, uh, you know, one of our biggest albums. One, two and three have sold 20 million copies, you know, something like that. So it wasn't a bad series and it wasn't a bad idea on our part. Just to see. of that era, you know, there was when we were growing up, well, Rob's five years older than me, but it's also the same era, you know, I got into reggae primarily because Robin, we know, was into it, and uh, four years or whatever it is between us, and uh, all of those records, you know, uh, that's what, that was the most common question that we were asked, right? why do you play, why love, do you, why does, why do you play reggae music, talking to me, and I'd say, because it's the music I love, and Ray Ray Rara, and then the Labour of Love thing explains it all, you know, those are the records specifically that we grew up loving and that were made, that's what made us love Because people were, were, were still saying to us, you know, why do you play reggae? You know, to us it was so natural, so uh, it, it was a stupid question, do you know what I mean? It just didn't make sense to us to be asking us, because if we were all black and from Balsall Heath in Birmingham, nobody would have asked the question. Well, I am king, surely I will.
Our biggest selling album is Premises and Lies. Premises and Lies. Because of the Elvis tune. Well, it was never an idea of ours to what? record Can't Help Falling. Uh, it was a, we were asked to do it for a movie, which was the Honeymoon in Vegas, the Nicolas Cage movie, where all, the, all of the tunes and the soundtrack were all Elvis tunes recorded by contemporary artists. We sent our version of Can't Help Falling in, which they'd asked us to do, you know, and we sent it in and they rejected it for Bono's version. And then Sliver, the movie with Sharon Stone, uh, the guy who was doing the soundtrack for that used to work for our record company, remembered the tune and said, can we stick that on the soundtrack? And we went, yeah, carry on. At the same time, we released it as a single and Bob's your uncle. It was bigger than the movie. <laughs> Well, Homely Girl, actually, we, we pretty much stuck to the version that we loved. Probably most of the band do remember the Charlotte's version, but the version that we were covering was a reggae version that was done by the guy who was the lead singer with the Pioneers, Jackie Robinson. To it, and it just brought it all back. Why we did it in the first place, you know? It's just <laughs> such a wicked little version. It's all, it, it, always the case with all of the Labour Love tunes, you may recognise them as, you know, original soul tune. With every track on the Labour of Love series was a reggae version. Chrissy Hines kind of discovered us when we were on our first British tour. She came and saw us at the Rock Garden, we were playing there, and we'd only played about 20 gigs up till then, and uh, Auntie Chrissy came along just at the right time and invited us on her tour. So um, we obviously said yes, and we never looked back after that. I guess that's all we don't have a lot. At least I'm sure of all the things we got. Hey, I got you, baby. I got you, baby. So we've known Chrissy over the years, and she was always saying, you know, with my looks, in your voice, we got to do something together. You know? And I remember saying to Chrissy Hines, if we're going to do something, we should do I Got You, Babe. And we did, and it went to number one. <laughs> I got you, baby. I got you, baby. 
to this day, she's and still. And as soon as you got to number one, she idea. said, "That was a great idea I had." No doubt, she'll say that breakfast in bed was her idea as well. If you've come for money, I haven't got any. That's with a hat. Welcome to visit I can remember she wanted to do a track called Let's Make a Baby. And I went, I don't think we so. No. Let's do Lorna and Scotty Bennett's Breakfast in Bed, because <laughs> again, that's another classic from our childhood. <laughs> I do think it's sad that the that the singles market has been so destroyed that the only position you get now is your week of release position. I think that's really sad because the joy of the charts in the old days for me was watching your act climbing. first single went uh, 80, 40, 20, 10, 4, 4, you know, and you could watch it climb and it was exciting, you know, and it used to take weeks for you to see what the potential of your record was, whereas now the potential of your record is what it gets the first week of release because the sales are so pathetic now, so tiny on singles that what you're selling the first week, that's it. Record companies really? destroyed the uh, singles market by, by outpricing themselves, by making singles too expensive, you know. But now that, that it's going to be on the internet and you sell, you know, you can download for 89p, I think the singles market well, should I come think back. It should in force ring. them to make singles a quid again in the shops, which is what they should have been for the last 10 years. videos. I hate the idea that you've got to make something visual to sell a piece of music. I just, to me, that is just, I still haven't got my head around it at all. I accept it as a situation that, that exists, you know, that you have to make a video to sell a record now. But I don't like it because that isn't what we make music for. We don't make music to be filmed, you know, to be in a movie. Well, we're not models. Exactly. As you can see. <laughs> you know, we're barnacle-fingered musicians. We're not bricklayers, and we're not much good at anything else except what we do, and we love what we do. Every hour of every day I'm learning more The more I learn, the less I know about before The less I know, the more I want to look around Digging deep on clues on high ground the moon and the stars sit well high The earth and the trees beneath the light The wind blows fragrant love by The cooler night for you to die On the wing the birds fly free The violet and tins and the sea The flower waits for honeybee The sunrise waits for life in the sea Every hour, every day such a fantastic, fantastically lucky situation right. that we've found ourselves in for the last 25 years. And it's, it's allowed us to have, you know, families and kids and all our mates to have families and kids. It's, it's, it's kept a lot of people employed and happy for a long time. And it's a, 
for me, it feels like an achievement, you know, and the fact that we're still here after 25 years and going for nearly our 50th top 40 single, you know, to me, that feels like something worth still going for. It's why I still want to make a record and I still want to go out on the road and I, you know, I still love doing what I'm doing because I know that we can do better than we're doing. And it, it, we've just done an album that I think is the best thing we've done in 20 years. Years, you can't feel anything but blessed to be doing what we're doing. We're still getting paid ludicrous amounts of money to do exactly what we love doing, you know, and you can't complain at that. If anybody else can say that of the same life, you know, then they're very lucky, lucky person. No, you don't hear us complaining. We give thanks. We complain in our lyrics, but we don't hear us, you know, in real life. We don't complain about our situation. We wouldn't, Ever. we wouldn't dare. We wouldn't dream of it, you know, because we started out on the dole and some of the people that would start out on the dole with us are still on the dole. They got a right to be complaining. We ain't. Digging deep, 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 de